I think part of it is he saw, you know, hey, if I can, if I can make this idiot some money, like if I can, if I can get him rich quick, like I could probably do that for a lot of people. So, and he wasn't wrong. And apparently it was a great idea and a great read by him. And it's, and it's worked out well for a lot of people, I think. And so. jump on in and uh, I want to start off with introducing Josh. So for those who don't know who Josh is, basically he's, you're like the original, like weren't you, weren't you technically doing lead gen with Dan um, before, before like? Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, I was, uh, I was broke obviously. And uh, you know, I met Dan uh, when I actually had a business and then I went broke and then um you know, Dan came in and it was really interesting hearing um, what he had to say. Is that audio okay? Yeah. Yeah. We hear you perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So um, anyway, Dan took me under his wing and, and uh, kind of showed me the ropes of that business. And the reason I'd even asked him was just because I, it was like the one thing that had worked at our coffee shop that we had. Um, he was the one, you know, he's just different and he came across that way from day one. And so uh, went to work with him and then, uh, you know, did really well for him, brought in some, some bigger deals, um, some deals that even that I think they tried to get and he had a, you know, sales guy or two and they were trying to get him. They couldn't quite get him, but, uh, I had some relationships, um, in the spaces they were trying to get to. And we ended up uh, pulling down some big ones and then I moved and, and, uh, he, you know, after he showed me this business and, and moved to Bend, Oregon and, and made it rip and, uh, the rest is kind of history. And so I think, um, I think part of it is he saw, you know, hey, if I can, if I can make this idiot some money, like if I can, if I can get him rich quick, like I could probably do that for a lot of people. So, and he wasn't wrong. And apparently it was a great idea and a great read by him. And it's, and it's worked out well for a lot of people, I think. And so uh, that's a, that's a little bit of the background there. Um, but uh, do you want me to just keep going, Chip? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I want to, want you to kind of chime in on it so what you're known for and what you're really good at is i call you like a whale hunter like you do like three massive deals a year but those deals are so much income coming from them and really it's because you you're willing to play like kind of the slow role on a deal where you can build relationships network and kind of get to know people in the area and you piece something together and take a sliver of the action and so i feel you know you do sales probably different to kind of more of a Dan style, which is where make as many offers as humanly possible and just kind of slay it, you know, one call, close it as fast as possible, or try to shorten the sales cycle. Um, so I feel for you, it would be cool for you to talk about like your approach because I feel yours is very different than what we talk about day in and day out. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I go, I go by a process like, you know, it's a sales process is what I, that's, I try to stick to that. Um, there's a lot of them out there, but the one, you know, for me, I think, uh, I always like, um, compare this to, you know, dating or you're getting to meet somebody like you just, I used to go really fast. And I used to like, when I was really young, I used to go fast, 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 you know, like really just try to try to like get to the point. But what I learned over time is, is, is everybody's like that everybody's like that. And so when you slow down, um, you, a couple of things happen. You start to really learn, you know, uh, about people and you start to understand who they are and, and their background. And, and those are really important things to, to find out because if you don't find those things out, they always come back to haunt you later in the sale. And so when you go to close, um, you know, for me, closing is always just a test uh, to see how well I did in the, in the rapport building phase and the getting to know them phase. Um, so, so that's, that's kind of, you know, number one, first and foremost. And I spend a lot of time um, in that phase. And, and if you think about it, like the closest people, you know, in your life, um, you know, a lot about, I mean, would you agree with that? Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah right. You, we all know, like, 
we know things we know things that we don't even really think about like what we know about them right like like i can pick up you know like i can pick up on my wife's habits i can tell if she's like you know if she's happy if she's sad if she's uncomfortable like if I said something and it rubbed her the wrong way, like I can see like those, those face movements and I can kind of just look at her and be like, okay, like, you know, got it like, Hey, chime it down or like, you know, or if I want to pick her up, you know, I, I'm just trying to fill out the mood. And, and I feel like in sales, a lot of times we get in there and we're so worried about the fuck, like what we're trying to sell, you know, like what we're trying to get out of it. We're not, we're not listening. We're not feeling out like the energy of the person. Right. And I know it's harder to do it on a Zoom call. It's probably harder to do it on a phone call. But I even when I was on the phones, you know, all the time, I would still just try to feel the energy of the call. Um, and, and I feel like it all starts, uh, you know, with with a couple of things. First of all, you kind of have to genuinely care about other people. Like, I feel like, you know, authenticity kind of rules. Um, I, I feel like that rules that rules everything. At the end of the day, when you get down to it, you know, authenticity to me is 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 a big portion of what I look for in people and intent, you know, so that's another one intent. Like, what is your intention? Like, are, are you just trying to sell to make a dollar? You know, is that like, is that the goal and there's going to be no follow up or are you trying to really bring them some sort of value? And people will pick it up in an instant. If you're just trying to push product, like if you're just, if you're trying to push, 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 like people are smart. they hit up every day. Uh, you know, rather you're like a, you know, you're a hot girl at a, at, at a club or wherever, you know, is getting hit on all the time, or you're like a billionaire, you know, who everywhere they turn, they're like getting hit up or like, you know, or you're like, or you're like Dan, you know, who's just, it's always like somebody always wants, wants something from you. Right. And so at some point you get, you get numb to that and you, you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. I feel like you're waiting for that authenticity to come through in somebody and somebody that genuinely cares a little bit about you. You know, they genuinely care like about who you are, what, you know, what you're about, what's important to you. And we're walking in, you know, talking about somebody's business, which is ultimately important to most business owners. You know, at the end of the day, you may not have anything in common with somebody. You know, they may be they may be a Republican and you're a Democrat or vice versa. You know, they may feel this way uh, about certain issues and hot issues and you may feel different and you might not have any sort of common ground with them. But the one thing that you're there for is to help the thing that they should love, you know, the most in business, which is their business. And so I think we have to be like uh, we have to be aware of that. And that's what I try to do is I try to get I try to get in there and I try to really like fill out where the problem is. And honestly, when you do a good job of talking to somebody and you just open up the conversation and you start asking questions, I mean, there's a million questions and, and we'll go over some of the questions that you can ask, but really it's not like, there's no secret. It's just like, you know, you sit down and the first thing is like, Hey, how are you doing? Like, how are you doing today? 